episode is sponsored by Summer because, well, we haven't been here in a while and we haven't talked about how fucking hot it is. It's fucking Lord hot. have mercy. Lord have mercy. Um, Summer is here and it's... so are we. Yeah, um, we are. We made it out of the devil's butt crack and now we're back. Somehow. Yeah. Somehow, somehow. Welcome to Yumi and Cheese Me, your number one source for cheese on the internet. It is our triumphant return to the air. Julie yeah. and Adrian here. Julie, Julie, Julie. Hello. Hi. How Hello. are you? I'm 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 I can't stop smiling. <laughs> I'm so happy to see your face and to hear your voice I'm and to talk so to you. So happy to see your face. And to talk to you. Should we spend the whole hour and a half just talking about how much we love each other? Okay. <laughs> a little bit of cyber sex? <laughs> what? <Okay. laughs> Do you think people would listen to us have cyber sex? I'd listen to us have cyber sex. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Then tune in to our next segment. <laughs> <laughs> It's time for a c- 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 cyber sex. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, it's good to be back. It's good to be back. We're back. Julie, how are you? The world wants to know. The world wants to know. Um, world, I'm better. I'm better. Um, I, I'll come clean. I, I'll come clean. <laughs> um, the The lack of podcasts were due to me um that's why we were not recording um and then right now whilst you were giving the introduction not that you I wasn't paying attention because of course I was of course I was um but also I remembered July was supposed to be a big month for me this year (laughs) and boy was it (laughs) and boy was it big full of growth revelations (laughs) discovery it's been a lot it's okay. been a lot um in terms of me physically doing things not a lot happening over here mm-hmm. in terms of me going through my brain and trying to fix the fucked up parts a lot of that has been happening mm-hmm. um let me rephrase that you cannot fix fucked up parts we mm-hmm. we are work in progress as um so so i uh my uh, depression mm. Mm -hmm. depression um kicked my ever loving ass like you wouldn't I don't think of since my diagnosis in 2013 I don't think I've ever felt that low in my Mm. life oh my god I felt so low and worthless and disgusting and I isolated myself from every single person except for my mom because she'd actually murder me Mm -hmm. but any every single friend you know how i'm always like i'm really bad at texting but i always respond to candace Mm -hmm. no not even candace not even candace um it was bad it was really 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 bad for like a week and then after that i think i was just like crawling out of it for a minute there Mm -hmm. um that week was really 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 rough and a lot of revelations. Here's the thing about depression that no one tells you is that depression is a very selfish crisis. Mm-hmm. Um, it's very selfish. And you don't realize how selfish you're being because you're you're trying to just save yourself from the negativity and the sadness of it. And I had a conversation with a very close friend of mine about how I was not meeting the expectations of a friendship mm-hmm. when they were giving me 70 percent i was giving or eight and no they were giving me like 90 let's be honest i was giving like a solid five mm-hmm. and it's that thing where i the way that i deal with my depression and that i'm going to work on not doing anymore is uh, i close in on myself I don't go around telling people I'm doing really bad. I don't go around sharing my feelings with people. I don't ask for help. I kind of just isolate. I keep to myself. I don't talk to people. I don't share. I'll just get back to them when I get back to them. Mm -hmm. And when you do stuff like that, you're missing so many important moments in other people's lives. 
-hmm. and you can't be happy for them and you can't celebrate them. But to them, because you're not sharing, it just sounds like you don't give a fuck about what I'm doing with my life. Mm -hmm. And I'm sharing my life with you and you don't care. And so there had to be that conversation of that's not what was happening. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm sorry, like so sorry that my mental health causes me to be a very bad friend, Mm -hmm. a very bad friend. And it's something that I've never really thought of because I know that I isolate and I know that I keep myself away from people when I have depression, but the you're missing my life has never hit me Mm -hmm. because my again with selfishness my brain is so wrapped up and consumed by I'm missing myself that I don't even realize that there's people that want me in their life that want me to celebrate their moments Mm -hmm. and I I don't I don't see that and I didn't see that I knew For example, with Candace, I knew I was missing text messages that had life in them. And Uh I knew that I was being short and I knew that I was grasping to to one word sentences, uh, one one word text messages. And so I knew that that was happening. But, you know, you don't really think when you're so fucked up in the head, you don't really think, but this is this is hurting me but this is also hurting them. Mm -hmm. This is hurting them. And I, I didn't think about that. And then with Adrian, there's this thing that that's a commitment that we both have. And I was so consumed by my sadness that I couldn't even communicate that I can't be a part of this right now. I couldn't even say it because I knew that saying it would need a conversation and I wasn't ready to fully appreciate or, or be aware of the fact that I was depressed. I kept like being like, I'm just lazy. I just don't want to do it. I just don't want to show up for this right now. Instead Mm -hmm. of acknowledging like you're not yourself and you're, doing things that that you'll regret right like stopping the podcast and letting the tiktok fall through the wayside and if all of those numbers end and if this project goes away at the end of the day once i crawl out of the depression it's gonna it's it's gonna hurt me and it's Mm -hmm. gonna suck and i'm gonna feel terrible about it so but when you're depressed that's not the thought process is not there at Mm -hmm. all until you you get a little bit out of the fog of it all I can't really I don't know how to describe it unless I'm just like you're walking around with a cloud in front of you like things are happening but you're Mm -hmm. not you're not aware of the things that are happening and so here on this podcast I'd like to issue a public apology Mm -hmm. to my friend Adrian Because I was a very bad friend and a very bad business partner. And stop. I know you're going to tell me that I wasn't, that I had to deal with my own stuff. But it is a very selfish thing that I did. And it's a very selfish, it's a very selfish behavior that I exhibited, exhibited. Um, And it's not fair to this And not just to you, but to the audience and the lack of communication. And guys, Adrian couldn't tell you there's no podcast because I wasn't telling Adrian that there was no podcast (laughs) until Sunday comes around and he's like, I guess there's no podcast. So I was not communicating at all. So this is on me. I'm fully aware that I need to change these habits around my mental health that I think I created to preserve myself. Um, Because, you know, for a minute there, I was losing people left and right. And Mm -hmm. I was very convinced. And it's very, when you're losing people left and right, or you're, even if it's an active decision, right, I'm going to cut this person out of your life. There is this thing of like, I'm not going to let anybody get that close again. I'm not Mm going to do it. I'm just going to keep to myself, deal with my shit. Because now people are walking around with my secrets 
and people mm-hmm. are walking around with my stuff and mm-hmm. I don't want people walking around with my stuff and um and then you know that thing with my brother where he threw my therapy in my face and basically told me that I my brother and I got into an argument and I told him he needed therapy <laughs> in a kind way mm-hmm. it triggered him because mm-hmm. maybe he needs therapy it triggered him and he said well you've gone to therapy and you're still a fucking mess so that combined with everything else was like you can never you can't tell people this stuff because mm-hmm. they're either holding on to it to throw it in your face or they're gonna leave your life with the information they're mm-hmm. just gonna leave it they're just gonna go away and i just i i, I was so um wrapped up in protecting that I ended up hurting myself and people instead of just hurting myself mm-hmm. instead of just being hurt I was like well I'm gonna fuck myself over and then the people around me over but you don't think like that right you just do things and then you're like oh shit I I was really mean to people because that's what it's meanness it's selfishness is a meanness and it's a very mean thing to do to actively look at your phone with text messages that you haven't answered and choose to unanswer them another day to ignore them another day it's a very selfish thing but i i also want to express i physically could not do it right i couldn't i would look i had my phone in my hands i would look our our texts and everyone else's you know i on when i text you about i'm i'm back i'm feeling better let's record mm-hmm. i sent out 10 text messages to people that Mm -hmm. I had not spoken to since Mm -hmm. the last time they texted me because I was so close. I was so isolated Mm -hmm. and I think I needed it because I needed to grieve a lot of things that triggered it. And I think what triggered it was dating. Mm. I think it did. I think I felt so frustrated by the lack of respect I was getting from some Mm -hmm. people Mm -hmm. that it triggered this frustration of it must be because you're not good enough. Mm -hmm. There has to be something wrong with you. There has to be something that's not clear. Why are you not clicking with people? You don't click with people. And it just really doubled down into unpacking years of wasted time and things and and things I could have done and decisions I could have made and relationships I could have kept or 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 gotten rid of sooner um and I think it just triggered a spiral of how did I get here to be 33 alone and frustrated because the human beings I'm interacting with have three brain brain cells if that and it was mm-hmm. not I'm no I'm no prize hog okay but but you know what it's like not even conversation bitch right you can't even give me good and it, it just triggered a lot of negativity towards myself which is why I couldn't record because I was like I'm so fucking annoying why I couldn't do tiktoks because I was like oh I'm so fucking ugly and stupid like it's just it really consumed I don't want to talk to my friends because they don't fucking get it they don't get right. it and then you know i love my mom mm-hmm. you know i love my mom and then i told my mom after like the second week i was hiding i was I, she had no idea what was going on mm-hmm. and i said um I'm, i've been struggling with depression i was on my way i was out the i was going out the door mm-hmm. and there she looked at me a certain way and i was like and I had already been like holding back tears the entire day. So I was like, I'm, I've been really struggling with depression. And she said, what, what's the reason? And I was like, I don't know what the reason. I, and at that time, I, I don't think I had connected that it was the dating. I was like, I don't know what the reason is. I'm just so sad. I'm so sad all the time. And, and she's like, but you, you seem fine. So are you going to go get food? And I was like, yep, I'm going to go get food. So that happened. Then a week after that, so about like a week ago, or last week, last weekend, again, I had I'd seen Can- Candace came to town, everyone. Mm-hmm. You missed her, sucks. You missed her little tour. 
can't see you now um but Candace come to town and I we we unraveled a lot and got 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 to a good place together mm -hmm. and I got to a good place uh because of her and so again I told my mom I'm feeling and this is I hadn't gone over a couple of weekends because I was hiding from myself but um but I had gone out with Candace a couple of times. I went out with Angie for one and um, for one of the times that she wanted me to come over. And then she, I was like, I, my depression is still really bad. And she said, um, she said, oh, that's weird. Cause you're, you're out with your friends all the time. Mm -hmm. And I said, okay. All right. And I think that's just the thing I'm not going to talk to my mom about mm -hmm. for my own preservation, because though I've come to realize that you cannot deal with things on your own and you cannot keep things to yourself because that's not good communicating with friends. I think you also have to realize when communicating is not beneficial to a relationship. And unfortunately, communicating anything negative about my life is not beneficial to my mom and me. And that's just a thing that has to be. Mm -hmm. And I just have to be okay with that. Because I think, I think my mom, I mean, not to throw her business out there, but I think my mom's mental health is not in a space where she could be helpful to me, even if she tried her very best. Mm -hmm. So I think I'm harming myself even more by telling her and expecting something because I don't think I'm going to get whatever I'm looking for. So um, a lot of, a lot of thinking, a lot of brain work has been happening. Um, I'm feeling a lot better, um, a lot better. I'm not in the clear yet. I'm still walking around with a little bit of cloud. But I am feeling a lot better. Seeing Candace helped me immensely. Mm -hmm. Even if we would have not unpacked so many things, I think just being in her presence helps me. Mm -hmm. Be it, she helps me feel more like myself. Being around her makes me feel like I'm the closest version to my real self. And um, that was really romantic. That was really Beautiful. fucking romantic. <laughs> Thank you. Um, but we're doing okay. We're doing okay and we're getting through it. And um go to therapy, guys, and get help and and realize when you're being a bad friend, because I'm great, but I'm not perfect. <laughs> and yeah. you know, I can be very selfish. My mental health issues for uh, uh, allow me to be very selfish they give me permission to be selfish and i think sometimes i need to know when to not accept that behavior for myself and push through it because every single person i reached back out to to tell them hey sorry about the, <laughs> the silence um i'm here now you know everyone responded in a very kind and healthy and beautiful way no one was like fuck you um not that i thought not that i thought but there was a second you know i ended my text with like to you with mm -hmm. uh if that's something you would still want to do mm -hmm. uh, for a second i was like and if he doesn't you have to be okay with that <laughs> You have to be okay with it because your actions have consequences. And it's a thing I think a lot of us try to ignore that our actions have consequences. And sometimes we do stupid shit and we hurt people and we make mistakes and we have behavior that is detrimental to the people around us. And, um, and that was me for a solid two months. I think it's slowly been getting worse. I think we can all, I think Angie and everyone else can agree that the silence gets longer and the lack of communication gets less and less. And um, I think I finally broke. And I think the scary part was that I wasn't crying. Mm. I was just kind of numb mm -hmm. and angry. I was very, very, very angry at myself, at my brain. Oh, I was so angry at my brain. 
Oh, I couldn't handle my fucking brain. I was so pissed off at it. So pissed off at it. Why can't you just be fucking normal? Why can't you just feel joy right now? I want to feel joy. I would turn on like new girl and friends and they're like, laugh, bitch. Like, have a good time, please. And it just wasn't go outside. I couldn't even go outside. I couldn't do anything. Um, but we're better. And good. we're getting through it. One day at a time. One day at a time. You know, I would wait for you forever. Don't you're gonna make me cry, <laughs> Adrian. So that was you really know. nice. Yeah, I. You know, you had yeah. to do what you had to do, right. but I wasn't going anywhere. So, thank you. Yeah, and I love you. I love you. That's beautiful. We're so fucking annoying. <laughs> Adrian, you made me cry. <sighs> Thank you. Of course. And I'm so happy to see your face and to see you smile. Um, yeah. It's, you know, I mean, you know, life isn't easy. Yeah. Life is not easy. And you know the world is falling apart. I mean, you know. (laughs) Everything is going to shit. Um, Can't even get my movies because everyone's on strike. (laughs) So, so we're struggling. We're, we're, you know, we're struggling. Um, But, you know, people, people, if you're out there and you're feeling sad and you're feeling like you're not yourself, oh, please go get help. Go talk to someone because I feel like with help, it's just, it's a little bit easier. I won't tell you that. Oh, that's how it helps. That's how it fixes. Go and help and you'll be perfect. This is definitely not how it works, but getting help. And even as much as saying, I don't feel okay to anyone that you trust right. is enough of a situation. It's enough to just say, I'm not okay. I'm not doing okay. I don't know how to, you know, it was when I finally t- had a conversation with Candace about it, it was like, I, I don't even know how to get back to myself. Mm-hmm. I don't even, I don't even know where I come back to. Cause I don't, re- I didn't recognize the version of myself that I was being this very mean, very disrespectful human being. I'm not, I'd like to think of myself as a good friend and I was not being that at all not even close to it i i doubt i was even being a good daughter i think i was just being there Mm -hmm. not necessarily good or attentive it's definitely not even being a good aunt and i love sophia with all my heart but um i think um getting help and saying it out loud even if it's just to yourself at one day where when i was feeling really down i was like brushing my teeth and I was like, you're fucking depressed. And I think that's all it took. One, for me to spiral downhill, I think it gave me permission to be like, you got to stop keeping it at bay Mm -hmm. because you're keeping it at bay. You're not dealing with it. And you're just elongating the process because Mm -hmm. you keep being like, it's not happening. It's not happening. I don't see it. If I don't see it, it's not happening. And it was just, it was, you know, it was just getting worse and worse. Um, so get help get help it's it is it's definitely scary i had some really dark really really dark days really really scary days um but you know we're out here we are yeah um have you been talking to a therapist this past couple of weeks i have not been talking to a therapist um i needed to get to that place mm-hmm. um I isolated myself so much mm-hmm. that I couldn't even begin to, if I didn't love Candace with all my heart, mm-hmm. I think it would have taken me so long to just unravel why I was being a bad friend. Mm-hmm. And I think it would have taken me longer to know that I had to apologize for being a bad friend. Um, And with Candace, I really didn't want to 
lose her or make her feel bad like I was doing I didn't want to keep making her feel bad and so it was uh you gotta suck it up but apologizing for selfish behavior is not easy right. especially not when you said I'm gonna have this conversation it's gonna be great and she said I'm coming to LA and I thought I thought over text bitch <laughs> um and now I have to look you in the eye and mm-hmm. admit that I have sucked so bad and you know she's worth it and you got to do it if you care about people you got to do it you have to apologize you have to be able to say uh my behavior has been negatively impacting you and for that i'm sorry you have to be able to do that no matter how bad it is if people are meant to be in your life they're going to accept you with all of the fucked up parts of you they're going to and they're going to understand if you are both adults with emotional maturity. And thankfully, Candace and I are. Mm-hmm. Candace and I are both adults. And so I did. It was it was hard. I, I had to like psych myself up before I said anything. We were both acting like nothing was wrong. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was like, I can't mm-hmm. act like nothing's wrong. I've been so shitty to her and she needs to know that I know that. So um, but, you know, I did a lot of apologizing. I did a little she did a tour of L.A. I did a tour of apology. <laughs> Just a little mini tour of, I'm sorry, I've been away. I've sucked. Come back to my life if you can. Um, So Candace came specifically to see you? No, 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 no. no, no. Was this this trip already planned? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, she was already planning to come down. She had some time off work. And um, I mean, obviously, we were plan when she told me we were planning to see each other. Mm -hmm. Um. But this was like, I need to see you to look you in the eyes and tell you that I know that I'm I'm a fucked up person. Mm-hmm. Um, in this moment, I've been fucked up. And so apologies uh, heal people. Mm-hmm. And self-reflection equals growth. Oh my God, I'm full of quotes today. <laughs> um, but no, it's true. It is true though. It is. Self-reflection is growth because you you become aware of y- your bad habits. I have a lot of bad habits surrounding my mental health that again, I've created to preserve myself, but I don't think I need to preserve myself. Right. I don't need, I don't need to protect myself from people that love me. And if two years from now, somehow, Adrian finds that he no longer loves me. It does not take away from, from this, this doesn't go away. And I think I struggle with that part of letting people go where I feel like, look at all the energy that was wasted here and the secret, my secrets that are gone. Um, and I'm very open with my close friends, babes. You may as well know the color of my butthole. Like I'm very <laughs> open about everything. And so uh, th- I think I had to come to the realization that you are allowed to love people unconditionally and let them love you unconditionally. And if you can't be afraid of it ending because it inevitably some way or another it will murder suicide could be the reason you know what i mean like it's going to end and you have to be okay with just allowing the shared experiences to keep existing um despite the end of the relationship but we're going to work on communicating and Mm -hmm. texting back within the day Mm -hmm. um and saying I don't feel okay Mm -hmm. not when you feel like the water is on top of you but like when the water is like at your waist Mm -hmm. when you can feel it it was at your feet now it's at your waist now it's time to say something and and let your community I mean that's why you have a community let your community do what it needs to. And honestly, sometimes they don't need to do a goddamn thing. You just need to tell them. Right. You just need to say it. And if, as long as they know, I, I think that's enough. You know, I think that that's enough. But what a Debbie Downer. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I don't think you're a Debbie Downer. Thank you. I appreciate your lies. 
<laughs> the audience is like sobbing. This bitch is going through. <laughs> I thought this was a comedy podcast. <laughs> the fuck is going on? <laughs> Um, we're just was like can she take more time off because she's <laughs> she's really not bringing in the giggles she's so not doing stupid. it <laughs> that is not true that's not what anybody's thinking about <laughs> i had people asking me begging you for a new these. episode oh my god i'm obsessed with every single one of you um no, I mean, thank you for sharing, first of all. Um, and, you know, I think the world of you. You're a star. Stop it. In so many ways. I think the world of you. Thank you. I appreciate you. And listen, you know, the world isn't, li- being a human isn't easy. Nothing about it is easy. No. And all we can do is take it one day at a time. Because you never know what's going to, you never know what's creeping around the corner. You never know how your life is going to change. Your life could change in an instant. That's very Um, true. You never know. And, you know, you're not the only one. I'm not the only one. So many people, everybody struggles with so many different things. Yeah. Um. And it's like, it's a shame that we as like the human species don't feel a bond with each other, you know, like Mm -hmm. we as humans who are humans live on this earth and we're the only ones. I mean, there's a lot of us, but like, there's no sense of like taking care of each other. Right. Um, on like a really global kind of perspective and like yeah. we're all struggling with very similar things um, yeah but for some reason we don't like to talk about it and so yeah. kudos to you Julie and thank you and you know thank you we're here for you we're here we're here we're back we promise giggles we promise I giggles. promise giggles. No more tears. Well, maybe, maybe a couple. I can't help myself. Well, you know that, that you should. If there were no it, tears, I would be worried. Yeah, it's who I am. It's yeah. who I am. Yeah. Um, but no, we're good. Thank you guys for asking. I did. I saw a message. I saw Anne. I saw. I saw it come in. I just ignored it. But um, I did see. I I I did see. And people would tell me too. It's appreciated um we, i apologize for the lack of communication with our audience about where the episodes were um how rude of us and by us i mean me mm-hmm. um how rude of me and we're gonna we're gonna keep doing this as long as y'all allow us to do it we are um i do have something to say though and julie and i ha- literally have not talked and so this you is know. news to her <laughs> great i can't wait uh- I'm going on vacation next week. <laughs> and so we may need to take next week off. <laughs> I am expecting all the DMs. And now it's Adrian's turn. I want everyone asking, why is Adrian missing an episode? I'm just kidding. Where are you going? I'm going to Miami. Um, yes, I'm going oh, to Miami. he's gonna fuck. <laughs> oh, <laughs> he's fuck gonna not. fuck. I'm not, Miami, watch out. I'm not fucking and anybody. Those butt cheeks. No. It's it's you're gonna fuck. I'm Miami. Are anybody. you kidding me? Oh, baby. <laughs> are you kidding me, <laughs> baby? You're fucking. I'm not fucking. Yeah, you are. Who are you going with? Uh, I'm going with Christian and Alex. You're fucking. I'm you're not. you're so all three of y'all. No. You're all fu- everyone's fucking. It's gonna be a fuck fest. No. God, cancel your plans if you're going to Miami because Adrian, <laughs> Christian, and Alex are gonna be out there looking. <laughs> they're you're they're on the very hunt. funny. <laughs> they're on the hunt. Um, that's so fun though. <laughs> yeah. Um. So. We may not have a Why new don't you and I go week. on vacations? How about that? We should. We and really see should. How that happens, right? Yeah. I would well, love to go on a vacation. 
okay let's do it yeah also See, just I just got talked him into a vacation because he had to say yes because we're on the podcast <laughs> you're very funny also just since we're on the topic of vacations okay. um in september i'm gonna be gone for two weeks what the fuck where are you going i'm, I'm going to italy all of I these know. trips who are you going to italy with christian and alex no <laughs> Um, I'm going to Italy for a friend's wedding. Okay, fine. I'll allow it. Fine. And um, yeah. I I don't. Gonna, I don't. Uh, yeah. I'm going to Italy for a friend's wedding. What's happening there? What's going on? No, no. <laughs> Abby and Joe. You fucking? No. Are you fucking there too? <laughs> my friends joseph and abby joseph okay. and abby are big listeners of the podcast hi, uh, joseph, hi, abby. Uh, my my invitation must have gone lost <laughs> interesting how that works out i must I, I do have to confess i i i i uh i am taking christian to italy interesting, That's um, interesting. <laughs> wow it's all coming out guys it's all coming out he said he accepted my apology. Little did I know <laughs> he was scheming behind the scenes. I was not scheming at all. Uh, okay. But I'll, I will be gone for two weeks in, in Oh, it's going to suck if Christian goes missing. Then we're going <laughs> to... I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just... Knock on wood. I'm just kidding. Christian, protect yourself. Get an air tag. <laughs> I'm just kidding. We I'm need to be put able an to air track tag on you. Him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh i'm just kidding that's gonna be so fun funny um so anyways just an fyi to let everybody know okay we're forgiving fyis in <laughs> december <laughs> she's going to london you are she's going to london with who? Guess for why Guess for with why who? with candace with candace i mean she, we're tied yeah so, do you don't see you the should. string no yeah um hosier concert oh my gosh wow yeah. i mean yeah wow yeah. talk about a dream come true julie talk about it let's talk about it wow yeah i'm so happy for you that's awesome thank you i'm very excited very excited okay well, we're looking for co-hosts. Uh, yeah, look at to... us. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Or trip sponsors. If or you guys want to sponsor, <laughs> if you want to yeah. sponsor our vacation. Yes. Yeah. Yes, you can find me on Venmo at DJ Adriatic. <laughs> it's the same as my Instagram. Yeah. Um, if you want to send me money to buy, I don't know, whatever I may need in Miami, please. Right. By all Honest. means. Right. I'm <laughs> I'm listen you're gonna be very disappointed when I come back and I don't have a story to tell then about you're not doing me Miami fucking somebody right. then you're not doing Miami. then don't even go stay home Adrian <laughs> okay you need to calm down <laughs> because you're starting kidding. to sound like somebody I know uh <laughs> okay. don't throw Alex under the bus like that <laughs> 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 this is funny this is very <laughs> funny very funny um quick little side note so i okay. um i got this notebook which if you're watching us on youtube you can see the notebook um mm -hmm. i got this notebook at the, uh in 2020 at the beginning of 2020 um mm -hmm. where i we did an episode i think once of like our 2020 predictions uh, oh, and that was the first page that I wrote in here. And I am now, uh, and I used this notebook to write down all of our uh, pop culture pop-up topics. Because um, we're professional. Because we're professional. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and amongst other notes, uh, there's some work things in here, some like my whole free Britney outline. We did a whole Britney episode. Oh yeah, yeah. It's in here. Um, let's see. The, there was a, in there was a pop culture pop-up. The first one, I think I see here, there was a uh, August entanglement song. Would not be able to tell you what the hell that is. <laughs> uh, 
um isaiah washington and ellen degeneres article um interesting yeah. um i have what taylor nikki Prague, one direction maluma new song ellen degeneres ending show beyonce clearly i just write down the key word and i don't yeah. really say what um i i <laughs> outlined the debt that i have <laughs> love that good for you responsible Um, king anyways this notebook is coming to an end and so it's been with me for a very long time um and i'm on the last page so i just wanted to share that with everybody i will keep everyone was on the edge of their seat (laughs) (laughs) your time (laughs) uh we're back (laughs) Uh, <laughs> yeah 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 no that's great honestly that's kind of crazy that you kept a notebook for that long <laughs> i've never i've never gone through an entire notebook before oh wow i love ever. that for you ever Come anyways in. um okay well julie is there anything else that you want to share anything else that you will any questions that you have anything that um i don't know anything else that you want to get off your chest no, I think I'm good. Is there anything you want to get off your chest? Um, no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no new developments while I've been in my bed? No, other than the vacations. Um, okay. Not a whole lot has changed. Okay. Yeah. It's been pretty mellow. I love that. Yeah. So you, sometimes you just need mellow. Sometimes you just need mellow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mellow. Mellow jello um okay well listen while we've been gone we uh have gotten some fan mail and so um three pieces of fan uh, around three pieces of fan mail um i think if i've missed your fan mail i'm so sorry um but we're gonna we're gonna start with the ones that i think we have (laughs) Um, and it wouldn't be a you me and cheese my episode without hearing from d so love it i can't wait Julie. Hold on. Uh let me say it's time for fan mail. Okay. okay. <laughs> now we can officially start. Here we go. Julie, Adrian. Hey. Um, what do I have to do to get you to say? Today's podcast is sponsored by our number one fan, D, and not Jaime. What do I have to do? Because I just, I, I would take so much delight in that. You know what I mean? Because um, it's not Jaime. It's me. Um, but I have a question. Um, <laughs> what is your, like, popular culture hot take? What's just, like, something that's, like, scorching hot? I got one for you. You're not ready. But my hot take is that Meryl Streep is only as good as her circumstances. The script has to be great. The cast has to be great. The direction has to be great. Like, for instance, in The Devil Wears Prada, one of the best performances I've ever seen an actor give ever. But then in Ricky in the Flat, she's subpar. The performance is lacking. It's mid or worse. No disrespect to her co-stars or whatever, but, you know, Diablo Cody wrote that, John, and she's so hit or miss with her writing. You know what I'm saying? So it is a poorly written film and she's bad in it. People say that Meryl Streep, I mean, that Viola Davis is the black Meryl Streep. Meryl Streep wishes she could do a fraction of what Viola Davis can do in any circumstance. To me, Meryl Streep, if all of the circumstances aren't great, she's not great. And she has gotten to the place that she is in the, you know, in popular culture. And she's revered the way she is because of role selection and because of white privilege not because of talent <laughs> what's y'all hot take <laughs> i could listen to d read the phone book honestly d i missed you so much d <laughs> so much so much that is a hot take that is a hot take <laughs> that is a hot take i do agree that viola davis is realms ahead of meryl streep i don't even think we all fully understand that um interesting what is my pop culture hot take do you have one because i need to think about mine um hmm 
You know what? When I listened to this a month ago, I just realized that this was a month ago. <laughs> I was like, what's my pop, pop culture hot take? And then I think I might have thought about something and I didn't write it in my handy dandy notebook. See? And okay. now well, I don't know what I what I think. I'll give you a I'll give you just a general hot take. Okay. I think that we put too much cheese on everything. <laughs> interesting i think that we don't need to put cheese on every food every meal that's fair i do think that's fair i mean it's cheese on everything there is a lot of cheese i mean i don't now listen i like cheese i don't like like i don't like like cheap cheese but i like Mm. cheese yeah but i don't like cheese in everything that i eat and i feel like we as a society just think we need to put cheese on everything and i don't like it i can see that i can see that yeah interesting Mm -hmm. lovely i love that um what is my culture hot take i don't think tom hanks is that good of an actor oh interesting i think he has one note Mm-hmm. I think he found a second. He found his second note mm-hmm. recently with Elvis. But mm-hmm. other than that, I think he has one, one note. And mm-hmm. um, I can appreciate um America's sweetheart for what he is. Mm-hmm. But talented, I don't. I don't see it. I don't see it. Mm. So it's What's like it? the same as D's, but not really. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. I don't think okay I'll, I'll okay how, how about this one um okay. I don't find stand up comedy that funny let's talk <laughs> about it I, I, I it's I, I, and I actually don't think that a lot of famous stand up comedians are funny like like the famous ones and yeah. I don't yeah and i find i i i i won't really i i won't sit and watch stand up comedy I won't. Neither will I. Um, Here's my hot take. I'm going to piggyback off that one. Mm -hmm. I think crowd work is not stand-up comedy and should be banned. There should be a law against it. When you say crowd work, what exactly do you mean? What's your name? (laughs) Are you with that one? (laughs) What what the fuck do you mean? I came to watch you. I'm not the show. I paid to watch you. <laughs> Every right. TikTok stand-up comedian does crowd work. Uh-huh. If I pay money for yeah. you to give me anxiety, mm-hmm. bitch, not only are you giving me a refund, you're giving me everyone else's. I need mm-hmm. all the money because mm-hmm. how dare you make me pay to get anxiety? Mm. This fucker is going to call on me. hmm and half the time, it's not even that funny. It's not. It's not. I hate crowd work mm-hmm. in anything. If a, not that I'm not going to magician shows, guys, but <laughs> if a magician does it, <laughs> unless it's like a thing, I'm asking for volunteers. Uh-huh. Okay, we're volunteering. Uh-huh. If it's uh, you over there, uh-huh. I'll kill you. Uh-huh. And you happen to point at me, I'll kill you with my bare hands in front of everyone. <laughs> I hate crowd work. I hate crowd work. And stand-up comedy, no, and crowd work that is disguised as stand-up comedy fills me with the rage that I could pick up a car, honestly, with the rage that I feel. I just, I fucking hate it. Mm-hmm. And you're going to sit there, look me in the eye and call yourself a stand-up comedian? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. the fuck yeah if anything you're a hype man because you're using someone else for content and you're just the aha uh-huh man get the fuck out of here mm, the fuck I, like out. I hate yes it. i agree with that i agree with that thank you thank you um i think chromatica is lady gaga's best album interesting interesting i said it i'll allow it i said it i'll allow it I, I think that hmm do I want to go there? Hmm. Say it. 
Say it with your chest. Well, okay, this one's not that. This one's not this one's not a surprise. Okay. Um I think Taylor Swift is the most overrated artist in music history. Yes, we know, Adrian. We know that you think that, Adrian. <laughs> I just want to make sure I got it in here. <laughs> I don't think we need any more Britney Spears music. Interesting. Yeah, yeah I think we're good. Britney, you can rest. Yeah, I think well. we're good. I mean, as long as it's not being made by Will, I am. Well, hot take. I don't think Will, I am needs to keep making music. <laughs> I just, you can also rest, Will, I am. <laughs> that? Take a nap. Yeah. yeah. Um. I think. I think. Actually, I don't know how I feel. I think that. Taking photos at a concert with the flash. Jail. Deserves jail. (laughs) Deserves jail. I think, okay. I think it does deserve jail. I don't know if it needed to be called out. Interesting. Only because, you know, they paid the money. I think they, I think that they shouldn't have been doing what they were doing but I think that I paid, you know, let me just take my picture. Interesting. I think Jake Gyllenhaal deserved an Oscar for Nightcrawler. And since he didn't get it for Stronger, which is what he really wanted it for, he's never going to get one. I think Jake Gyllenhaal is a psycho. <laughs> mm, I can accept that. I mean, I don't think he's a psycho i do think he's intense but i don't think he's a psycho but i think he's given us his best work i think that um oh my god i forgot his name how dare you what is his name what's he look like what's he been in evan hansen ben platt ben platt i think ben platt is mean like mean mean I think Ben Platt is the irritating kid you never want to hang out with. And I don't think anybody did. And that's why he's mean. And I think that he grew up and he's stupid. Right. (laughs) No, but I do think I do. I think I would like Ben Platt better if he just fucking accepted the fact that he was a Nepo baby. I was so annoyed with when he, when they did. So annoying. I mean, that is what is the most annoying to me. How are you? I mean, who? I agree. I agree. Because it is, it was the complete opposite way of how you handle that kind of question and sometimes i wonder i wonder is he dumb or are 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 are, no he's dumb or are his pr people dumb no it's him it's him he gives me a very much what i say goes is his pr team couldn't have talked him into anything (sighs) yeah he's he's a dummy he's a dummy he and every time there's a fuss about him being an epo baby it makes me hate him more yeah and I, if he just accepted it i'd be like maybe i could accept that you looked 57 and dear evan hansen but it was still good but because you keep acting like an idiot right. i'm not gonna say it was good i'm gonna right. say it was a stupid movie and yes maybe your debut album was phenomenal mm-hmm. maybe <laughs> but it's hard to give you a stream when you're crying about being a nepo baby uh, crying about like a little bitch baby i hate it i hate it I just hate accept it, it i hate it too so i mean there's so many th- you know what i would have said if i mm. were a baby i'd be like i believe that genes are strong and there is something running running through my blood that requires me to be an artist and a performer and you know what i did have a leg up and i can't i and i don't feel sorry for that but as he shouldn't i was born to be a performer and i'm doing what i was born to do 
Yeah. And if you want to support my projects, great. And if you don't, then okay. Yeah. That's what I would have said. Ben Platt, call Adrian for all future my interviews. Goodness. Because Jesus. I'm not cheap, Ben. So you better fork over the PR cash. He has it. He has Oh, it. I know he does. Yeah. Because because why? Because he's a Nepo baby. Hello. Ugh. Okay. D, thank you so much for the great thank question. You, uh, we appreciate it. We hope that you're doing well. Can't wait to hear from you again. Mm-hmm. D, let us know when you come to LA. Um, you know, who doesn't love sunshine? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Next up on the pop culture. Not, we're not, we're not, wait, we're not on the pop culture pop-up yet. <laughs> we have more fan mail. Okay. This one comes in from uh, a previously mentioned Alex. Okay. My good friend, Alex. Here we go. <laughs> Hi, Yumi and Cheese May. This is Alex back again. Uh, I know you've missed me. It's been a while. I have been trying to um, catch up on back episodes, and it's taken me a minute. Uh, So right now, I'm technically in early May with y'all, but I wanted to get this fan mail to you, Quanto, um, and hear your thoughts. I'll probably listen to this in like three months. (laughs) But... um, so for context, I am watching Sex in the City for the first time in my life. I'm very much on that journey. Um, I've devoured like five seasons in a matter of weeks. It's been it's been like that. Um, but I I feel like this has been the perfect time now in my early 30s to really watch this show and appreciate it. Um, I'm very much listening, you know, just for some insights. Not that I want to model my romantic life after any of these characters um but it has me thinking about dating and my friendships which are incredibly incredibly important to me um and then the dating lives of those friends so uh my question is two part first of all any general thoughts about sex in the city that you all may have um as fans as watchers as critics whatever um But more importantly, I guess I wanted to ask you guys about how this show uh, impacts or inflects your feelings about what I consider to be a dating crisis today amongst people in their early 30s, especially here in Los Angeles. Um, I find that there is an astonishing amount of good-looking and well-rounded and open people who are very single and I know that you know being single is not a new phenomenon but I also find that on the other end of things you know (laughs) eligible bachelors and bachelorettes or bachelor thems um you know basically people are not interested in developing relationships as they are kind of like televised through sex in the city right which is like a genuine interest in either sex or getting to know somebody and and doing that in a humane humane or human manner. Um, I I feel like maybe phones and the internet have something to do with this, but what's going on? And what can the Carries, Samanthas, Mirandas, and Charlottes of the world expect from your opinion? Um, Would love to hear your thoughts. A very happy, never lonely, but single 30-year-old. All right. Take care. Thanks, Alex. Another Alex. person I could listen to read the phone book. Mm. Such a delicious voice. I agree. Yes. Uh, Julie, thoughts? Um, I agree. I agree. I agree. I agree. Hope? I don't know if I can give you hope. <laughs> I don't know if I can give you hope, my man. Um, uh, oh, geez. It um oh so many thoughts are running through my head here's the thing um i do think that phones and internet have something to do with the way that we treat each other i do think um and i do agree that dating is very inhumane right now um and that like courting and going out and this fun stuff date night it, i mean babes if, if y'all are getting it let me know how because it's not the effort is not coming in it's not coming in um 
I don't know what to say to someone in their 30s that wants to date that isn't you know what babe just give up (laughs) (laughs) because that's kind of what I want to tell myself sometimes is like you know what stop looking it's not gonna happen and you're just gonna keep getting disappointed and uh, I don't I don't know I did not do my homework as I was instructed to do per our last episode of going outside to meet people (laughs) so maybe that would fix a little bit of my problem maybe maybe that might fix a little bit of my problem but um I don't I don't know what the answer is and I don't know how you can encourage someone to start dating I don't know how to do that because I know what it's like and I don't want to encourage anyone to go out there and look for it because it's rough out there um so maybe just I would say watch Sex and the City, stay at home, call it a day, don't <laughs> talk to anyone else. I I mean I'm obviously as I said before not an expert expert in any of this. Um and I think I I I I had an observation the other day when I was on TikTok. There's a filter that gives you I forget exactly what you, I don't, I don't remember. I think you, I don't remember if you rank them or if you put them as a Mary kiss kill. I don't, I don't remember. Um, But there's basically a filter where it gives you a celebrity man. I think you have to rank them. Um, And every time somebody would get a hot man, a Paul Mm -hmm. Rudd, a Ryan Gosling, whatever it may be. But every I just love the, the first, Paul Rudd was the first. Well, that's the only one I remember seeing. Oh, okay. Um, I know it's a little random. But that's, he's the only one I remember seeing on, on the filter. But conventionally, a hot man. Yeah, right? yeah. Uh huh. But every time they would put this hot man, they wouldn't rank them number one because could come on. Well. But because we are obsessed with thinking that there is someone who is yep. going to be better yep. than what we're presented with. Yep. Because these eating apps have basically brainwashed us into yes. thinking, if I keep swiping, I'll I'm going to find somebody better than this person. Yes. When in reality, no such thing exists. mm now, could you find somebody that you connect with maybe on a better on a, on a deeper level on a on a you know whatever it may be? Yes. But we are consumed yeah with the thought that we are going to find somebody that looks like mm-hmm. what we have pictured in our minds our entire life. Yeah, and who we have also been brainwashed to think will look like what you see on Instagram. Mm-hmm. I, I, um, there's these two influencers that I've seen their TikTok videos a couple times, uh, and I, I think I think I follow both of them. Him, gorgeous. Her, gorgeous. And then not too long ago, I realized that they were dating, and I was like. This actually makes sense. <laughs> They're both uh, very likable, fun, beautiful people. Mm-hmm. Me as a, um, as a, you know, somebody who's hopeful for whatever love may come. And I'm not saying mm-hmm. this about me. I'm just saying like hypothetically. Right. I'm not going to give Bozo the clown who's maybe very nice and sweet and, um you know has great qualities a chance because i think that maybe i might be able to find that other person who looks like what i should be posting on instagram and tiktok Uh, and so i think that is an epidemic that we have going on amongst uh younger people uh millennials who are obsessed with continuing to swipe because they think they'll be able to find 
something better. Something when in better. reality, I think if we probably ask a lot of people who are older who, than us who didn't use social media or phones to find partners would probably have to tell you that the person that they ended up falling in love with was not necessarily the person they thought that they would fall in love with. Right. Right. But we don't give those people enough opportunity to come into our lives. And so maybe we need to take a step back, relax, delete yeah. the dating app and go meet somebody. Or maybe take a look around you and see yeah. who's standing there. I agree. Um, and so, you know, that's my thought. I will say about Sex and the City, Alex has convinced me to watch Sex and the City as well. So I, I'm also on the Sex and the City journey. And I, what I have found the most striking is mm -hmm. that a lot of what is happening on the show when this was made in the late 90s is still very much relevant to today. And I find myself thinking, oh, wow, these are things that I talk about uh, with my friends or here on the podcast. And we are living in a completely different world. But the themes of love, of sex, of relationship don't necessarily change that much. Because at the end of the day, being with another human, navigating, being in a relationship with another human um, uh, is still very much the same. And so right. uh, I have found myself enjoying this show. Interesting. Um, I have found myself frustrated <laughs> with some of these characters I could see, yeah, yeah, yeah. And also um, caring about them. And so that is my Sex in the City opinion so far. I've only made it through a small portion of the show. I love that. Um, I've tried watching Sex in the City multiple times. I can't get into these white women. I can't. I can't. Um, but I love the this journey for you it's a lot of seasons right it's like a hefty show i think it's like six seasons oh i thought it was more well okay. then they made two movies and then they right. brought it back again right, so right. it is a long journey for that somebody commitment. you know me yeah somebody like me who doesn't watch who thoughts who, are with you who moves very slow not just at watching life but watching life at mm -hmm. watching tv shows but at anything in life so yeah. um Come yeah. back in 2025 and see if he finished the show. <laughs> I probably would have made it to the first movie at that point. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Uh, okay. Uh, we have one more fan mail. And this one comes from our good friend, Ane. Oh. Hold on. These massages and the uh, fan mail this week. Um, since I know you guys are off, it's going to be plenty of time to think of fan mail. Um, mostly for Julie because I know she loves to bear. Julie, did you hear? Did you see the Dumois post that Jeremy Allen White is rumored to be dating Selena Gomez? If so, how do we feel? I feel like I kind of like it very unfair but i'm into it we'd like to know your thoughts julie i do love me some jeremy allen white I love me some jeremy allen white i did see that dumas post um i screamed for selena gomez because she was pretty gay fucked real good no um here's the thing <laughs> i'm kidding apologies selena um what do I think? I think, that's what I think. I have conflicting thoughts because the other day I remembered that Jeremy Allen White is getting a divorce. I remembered it and I thought, hmm, interesting. So I did a little Instagram snooping. What else was I to do? I was stuck in bed. So I went on his ex-wife, current 
process. She's on the way out. So I went on her Instagram and I found a Mother's Day post that she had posted about how hard single parenting is um, and how co-parenting is not what she thought it would be. And it was very intense. Oh, I have a screenshot of it somewhere, but where it's going to be hours, babes. I've taken a lot of photos since then. So um, of my boobs specifically. No. So I, I... <laughs> read that i read that um instagram post and i will i i felt a little weird about jeremy allen white because if she's being so loud about the lack of support in the parenting situation it just feels like it's that bad you know what i mean like it's that bad now that i'm going to let people know that you suck but then i think people started noticing it and commenting on it and she changed the caption and i don't remember what she changed it to but she changed it so I don't really know what's going on there. If that wasn't the case, if I didn't have an inkling that he's not a good dad, I would say, Selena, get it. Get it with all you can. Get it. I was, I had an inkling of this happening once the show took off. I said, oh, he's with his high school sweetheart. <laughs> oh my God, babes. It's gonna no no kiss her goodbye babe bye good luck out there like it's no no I knew it he's not that old he's young he's in his prime have you seen without a shirt on I sure did to the gods um and married to his high school sweetheart with all the success <laughs> no no right. I hate to say that men are predictable but um i like this for selena gomez though if 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 there is some w miscommunication on the parenting side maybe it's just you know they're still getting they're still working it out and he is a good he's a good man he's a good dad very happy for selena because other than the parenting thing jeremy allen white seems to be a very disciplined very serious very intense very um um like what's the word uh dedicated human being not only to his craft but to the people around him so i feel like if this is the case ignoring the parenting thing i think this is the kind of man selena needs a man that's disciplined serious you know in his prime she's in her prime they're gonna do the thing do the thing and he's he's also very private so i think this will be good for her Listen, anything is better than that chain smoker man. Babe, you had to let it go. Mm. Yeah. Thank you, Anna. What a great question. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, just a reminder, you can send us fan mail whenever you would like. You can send us fan mail uh, inst on Instagram at Yumi and Chisme. Uh, I'm not sure what's happening on Twitter anymore, So, but maybe uh, you can send voicemails there. Uh, if you know either of us personally, feel free to just send us, text us a voice memo, uh, and we can do use that as well. Um, if you, yeah, if you want to write something in, we also take uh, written fan mail as well. Okay, well, that's going to do it for the fan mail, and we're going straight into... The pop culture pop up. First up on the pop culture pop up, um, Ariana Grande. She broke up with her husband, got a divorce, or he's getting a divorce while she's been filming the Wicked movies, mm -hmm. and then somehow has fallen in love with one of her Wicked co stars, SpongeBob mm -hmm. SquarePants, and <laughs> he uh, apparently left his wife who's about to have a baby no had a baby oh had a baby ariana held the baby ariana held the baby ariana's oh been hanging out with the couple babes uh, and so now ariana and what's his what's his real name i don't know his ethan name. ethan slater i think ethan slater um and now they're an item and he ethan just filed for divorce from his wife uh his ex-wife Listen, I am a big proponent for love. And sometimes you find love in weird and uncomfortable places and times. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. And so I want to say that I hope, I hope, I hope that this is brought on by real love. But (laughs) Ethan, Ethan, you know what's very interesting? My initial thought when I first saw Ethan, I was like, hmm, he looks interesting (laughs) that's nice that's saying that's nice words you're using and then somebody on tiktok was like let me explain this she said when you grow up as a theater kid and Mm -hmm. you are only surrounded by these types of men you would understand why she would find an ethan attractive I was not in theater, so I don't know. Julie, your thoughts? I was in theater, but they weren't like this. <laughs> um, I'm just kidding, Ethan. That's very me. You're an adulterer, so I don't take it back. Um, Ariana, I am a girl's girl. I want to be clear. I am a girl's girl, but you know who isn't? Ariana Grande. Ariana Grande. He, unfortunately... There, there's some overlap in a lot of situations, Ariana. Big Sean, Pete Davidson. There's a little bit of overlap with the last one and the new one. And it seems like you come in at the perfect time. I, there's just a lot of overlap. That's all I'm saying. And um, this situation in particular is, it's messy. It's messy because um, you held their baby. You held their baby? You hung out with them as a couple and y'all were fucking. I don't know if they were fucking. That's me just saying. I don't know. I We don't know the timeline because Ariana and Ethan are keeping mom's the word. But you know who isn't? The ex-wife. Yeah. She said, who wants to chat? Yeah. Meet me in front of my door. I'll be standing here waiting for the mic. Um, And she is obviously hurt. And right. But, you know, there there is also the thing of a woman scorned mm. so uh, how much can we trust how pissed is she uh how much of the truth is she stretching mm-hmm. but i think if we look at the timeline of events of when they were filming when they met when things happened i think the holding the baby and hanging out with them as a couple is a valid thing that could have happened and if we're going by the information ariana what are you doing okay but what if it was him who was like what if he was telling ariana we're not in a good spot we're not really together anymore but if she's hanging out with him i mean i don't know maybe what if this happened after we don't know i we don't know we don't know i would like for more of the blame to be put on him I would like, well, I think, you know what? It's not that I don't put the blame on him. I think I just don't expect better. You know what I mean? Mm. It's like, well, of course he did. Of course he did that. Of course he allowed that to happen. And with Ariana, it's like, girl, what are you doing? You're Ariana Grande. What are you doing? What, what is the reason? I just, I don't, I don't. And not, look, I'm not shading him in terms of what he looks like what he acts like i've seen interviews um or any of that i'm just saying what are you doing and again unfortunately if we look at past relationships and ariana maybe you just need to stop dating maybe breathe maybe breathe a minute find yourself i mean I don't know. Look, again, I'm not saying Ariana's a fucking devil. Look at what she broke up a family. No, that's not what I'm saying. I mean, she did, but that's not what I'm saying. Uh, They both were, uh, again, they both were complicit in a situation. I mean, I think, look, I'm a messy bitch. (laughs) And I've come on on here and I've said, I've been messy before. I have been um, involved with married men. Um, Because people make mistakes and people have those days. So, I think if you are a human who falls into this situation, 
with a man who you knew had a wife, you are just as guilty. You're just as guilty because I don't care how many times that man tells you we're in a bad place. There is a tiny part of your brain that's telling you this fucker's lying. There's a time. It could be the tiniest bit, the tiniest microscopic bit, but it's there and you hear the voice every, every so often. So I feel like not to say, oh, Ariana, fucking she's the worst. I I don't know. I, I don't think she's the worst, but I think messy, messy for what? For a relationship that'll last for six months. I just don't get it. I don't get it. I don't. This isn't love. I think we all collectively know that. I mean, it's probably less than infatuation and circumstance. Yeah. Yeah. And now the baby's without a dad. I'm just kidding. Look, <laughs> you know what? If it broke so easily, it must not have been working to begin with. Right. I'm just, right. like a lot of things can be true at the same time. However, I mean, Ariana, if I, I can't believe you're a girl's girl. I can't. Not with the information I've been given. Big Sean, Pete Davidson. Now this guy, it's looking messy. Hmm. Ariana, come on the pod. Would love to discuss. Come on the pod. Would love to discuss. Next up on the pop culture pop up, um, Britney Spears is releasing a book. She's releasing a book, and yeah. um, apparently, lawyers representing Colin Farrell and Justin Timberlake have been yeah. trying to get their hands on the book so that they could prevent maybe certain pieces of information that may end up in the book. Julie, do we know anything about what that may be that they want us to not know? <laughs> I do. I know exactly what it is. Okay. I'd like to go on record before I share this information. I'd like to go on record and say, Colin, someone send this audio to Colin, please. You guys know the deal. Um, Colin, we, I look, I know you've rehabbed your image. I know you're so much of a better human, but we have not forgotten fuckboy Colin. We haven't. If anything, it's like a long, beautiful memory. <laughs> oh, remember when he was making out with people at the red carpet? Oh, what a time to be alive. Um, I think when I tell you what what he's trying to keep from the um the the book, uh, we're all gonna laugh. And no one's going to think, oh, that fucking Colin. I think we're all going to say, oh, I I wish I had a Mm t-shirt. So this is what it is. How do you know this? uh, Because I read the article. Oh, okay. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know. I didn't know there was an article that that said what it was. (laughs) <laughs> but also also this information i had already heard at some point in my life i already knew this information so call in this isn't a secret okay and i want to think he had said it in interviews but maybe he was drunk or high when he said it in interviews so he forgot okay sources claim that the book will reveal that Farrell upset spears after their fling when he reportedly sent her a <laughs> A bumper sticker that read "Honk if you've slept with Colin Farrell." <laughs> that is, uh, uh, the rumor I had heard is that he gave out T-shirts. Uh huh. That's the rumor I had heard, but apparently it was bumper stickers. Um, a bitch, that's funny. Uh huh. That's funny. That's funny. That uh-huh. is funny, Brittany. I love that you remember that. Colin, let it be. Let the chapter live. I want to read it. I want to read it. Um, what a time to be alive, Colin. I don't know. I would I'm dying to know if it's embarrassment or like what is it? Why do you he's so open about I think it's concerned about how it would be perceived. And also, what is she gonna say when she like how did that make her feel? Like, right. was she a, was she like heartbroken because she actually had feelings for him and he was just like trying to have a fling or right. like, I think that is, I think the percept, I think he thinks it's funny, obviously. Right. Uh, he gave out the stickers. So. <laughs> <laughs> but I think he's probably worried about the way in which it's written about. That's, that's that what I sense. think would be the concern. That makes sense. 
and then how in turn he is being perceived as this you know which because nowadays it's not cool to be a dog right. you know yeah, yeah. And so I don't know, bitch. If Jacob Elordi was given out honk if you slept with Hank, Jacob Elordi bumper stickers. I think that's funny. I think that's funny. You know what? My pop culture hot take. I think every leading man deserves a fuckboy phase. Give it to him. Let them be messy and let them fuck everybody and everything. I think they do. I think that happens. I want to know about it. <laughs> I want it to be loud front page news. I want to know. I want it era colin farrell where he was doing it and we all heard about it mm-hmm. that's what i want okay give me more sex tapes okay um only if they're released in a consensual manner okay i don't want we're, we're not over here peeping <laughs> rudely i'm just saying I, I i miss that kind of mess got it got yeah it. okay Colin, Colin, come on the pod maybe you Colin. can give us one of the bumper stickers <laughs> <laughs> do you have any bumper stickers left <laughs> would love one he probably has a box full of them um okay um, colin watch come him on run out <laughs> <laughs> he ran out of all because he used not. so many um <laughs> i'm sure he over he over purchased or at some point he probably stopped giving them out okay finally on the pop culture pop-up um well you couldn't go anywhere the last couple of weeks without being bombarded by barbie I'm a Barbie girl. And um, to everyone's surprise, Julie and I have both watched Barbie. <laughs> Jesus. What a time to be alive. I loved it. I loved every second of it. I walked away thinking Margot Robbie is an incredible actress. I agree. The scene where she was at the bus stop with that old lady. <laughs> oh, God. what? I cried. What? Yeah, I thought it was. It was so it was simple too. So simple. I, I, my favorite part of the movie was Ro- Margot Robbie. To be honest with you, I she thought was she good. was spectacular, and mm-hmm. I, and and. Uh, you know, I don't think that she'll win an Oscar for this, but I think somebody I was listening. I mean, I w- would love that if she did, but mm-hmm. somebody was asking, was talking about this on a podcast that I was listening to, and they said, when I think about who's going to win the Oscar, I think about could anybody else have played this role? Mm. And considering that there were multiple people attached to this film to play Barbie. Yeah. I mean, I just don't think anybody else could have done it the no, way she did it. I thought Margot Robbie was perfection. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I also thoroughly enjoyed the the film. I think it was perfect. Greta Gerwig, the warm, the woman that you are, and the way that you see us as women. I can't get enough of you. Um, I love that the the emotional uh, the Margot Robbie served a lot of the emotional depth of the film. I think the fact that the weight of the emotional through line was on a Latina woman's shoulders was perfection. Um, I was talking about it at work today that that trend that was happening on TikTok where uh latina daughters were giving their latina moms like a barbie or a doll for the first time that they had never had before this idea that women and latina women specifically because i can relate to that um so many of them lose their childhood to responsibilities to adulthood that comes too soon and to that greta gerwig maybe even accidentally found a way to incorporate that into this film was so beautiful to me and i i want to say that it was accidentally because i don't think we are all prepared for that level of brain from greta gerwig to understand that a latina woman playing a woman who plays with dolls to get at her frustration is so layered in so many different ways um 
And uh, I'm really, really loving the uh, I the movies about hating men take. I really love that take. Oh, I love when people say stupid shit like that. Because it's like, y'all, it, it just went whoop, right over here. It just didn't, you didn't even, could have caught it, but you didn't. That the idea um, that the movie was not also yelling at men to say, wake up, you're falling victim to these things too. Like you can be... It could be different for you. You don't have to get stuck in this layers and layers of bad, toxic behavior that harms everyone around you and the communities around you. I mean, this movie is layered, bitch. The layers are everywhere. Um, it's a Photoshop I document. It. And it and and it was hilarious. It was so funny in so much of it. And Ryan Gosling, respects, phenomenal. Yeah, I thought it, the whole cast was great. I mean, America Ferrera is a movie star. America yeah. Ferrera is a television and a movie star. Yeah, uh, Ugly Betty, the traveling, uh, sisterhood the, of the traveling, the sisterhood pants. of the traveling pants. Real women have Real curves. Real women have curves. Oh my god. Gotta kick it up. Oh, so good. Um Superstore. Superstore. I mean America Ferrera. Wake up, ladies and gentlemen. Is yeah. that bitch. And that monologue, that monologue she gave towards the end about women. Uh-huh. Yeah. Impactful. Yeah, I had to go when I got home. I had to go find it again because I was like, I was so wrapped up in the, her delivery. I know I missed something, um, and it was just as powerful reading it. But I mean, she does something phenomenal on screen. Yeah, it's quite spectacular. Yeah, um, Barbie, come on the Barbie. pod. <laughs> Barbie, come on the pod. Marco Robbie is insanely talented. And as you know, I there was the same podcast I was listening to was talking about how like she, you know, she also produced this film. She did, mm -hmm. which is quite also an extraordinary feat. Yes. Um, and so, you know, kudos to everybody who who made the movie. Agreed. That's gonna do it for the pop culture pop up. We'll be back next time with more pop culture cheese man. Julie, do you have a Latinx spotlight for us? Oh. <laughs> um, uh, I, you know what, bitch? I do have a Latinx spotlight. Okay. Um, okay, I'm going to do a Latinx spotlight and I'm going to do my azúcar in one. Okay. Um, Because it, this is the only thing that's consumed my life recently. Okay. And I, I did talk about this before, I think, but I, I need to keep talking about it because um august 13th is when i get my life back and i i can't wait for that day to come because i'm sleeping at 2 a.m in the morning i'm waking up really early i'm i'm not even a person anymore i'm just a person that turns on a live stream and carries my ipad around with me i am talking about la casa de los famosos um which is aka for lack of a better term big brother mexico celebrity big brother celebrity mexico edition um we are still we are on day 50 something of of that show and um i watch it every day and when i can't i'm not at home and i can't i refresh a twitter feed to see what they're up to <laughs> this show will okay here's the thing about why it's so good because it's bringing people from all of Latin America and Spain, because they apparently aren't tired of conquering everything, so they had to come into the show too. So they they're getting people from Latin America, um, celebrities from Latin America, from all types of generations, older generations, new inf one new influencer, and all kinds of backgrounds: a transgender woman, a gay man, you know, the family machista man, all all kinds of feminists all the stuff into one house where you can only interact with each other whilst 
voting people out, creating alliances, whispering where you can't whisper because it's a house, everyone can hear you. It's a lot. Here's one thing that happened though this last week that I think is very important and we should talk about. There is my favorite, Nicola. Nico for short. We're going to call him Nico. He is from Peru. Love him to death. I'm going to fuck him when he comes out. I can't wait. Um, No, I do. I love him. I think he's, I think he's great. He went through a lot in Peru. Okay. He, if you look him up, you're going to say, Julie, you, the woman that you are, I can't believe that you would support this man. A lot of allegations against him, uh, abusive man, aggressive man, you know, bad relationship, toxic relationships with ex-girlfriends. Those have all been disputed by the ex-girlfriend as well. There is an official, I found, I went and I found it. I didn't just say, oh, she released a statement and I took it as word. I went and I found the tweet exactly where she says, he never touched me. I don't know. This thing got out of hand. This toxicity got out of hand. So this man is trying, now he's like, Mexico is going to be my second chance. I'm going to come to Mexico. I'm going to get work. I'm going to bring my family to Mexico and we're going to get out of Peru and the media that just attacks me and doesn't like me. And the people don't no longer love me because they think I'm shit, you know, because of all the rumors and all the shit. And so he's, he's a doll. Mexico has fallen in love with him. The people of Mexico has, have nicknamed him. Mexico's boyfriend. They love him so much. They put his picture up on Times Square. That's how much they love the man. They can't even vote in New York and they got his picture up in Times Square. Anyway, something very interesting happened. He is a part of a team of six people. This they all sleep in the same room. Essentially what happened here is the people that slept in this room were like, "Let's become an alliance. We sleep here." They can't hear us at night. Like, let's become an alliance. And we'll start knocking all those fuckers out. And they did. They knocked all them out. And now it's six and two of the other team. They've knocked everyone else out. And none of their team has been voted out. Like, they are powerful. Not just in the house do they seem powerful, but the audience loves this whole team mentality. They're they're dwindling down on the other team. And because they have to vote three to one, they have to give each other a vote. They have to pick someone from the team to vote. So what happened that day or that week when they knew it had to come to one of them? They all started getting in a group. They all started whispering about Nico. I think he's going to betray us. I don't think he's trustworthy. They would go to the backyard and they would do it they would go to the gym and they would do it they came to the couch and they would do it they went to the to the dining room and they would do it and nico was kind of always around and they would stop talking when he'd come around and it was like this is weird and you could tell that he was feeling like this is weird and he exploded at some point he couldn't it's a lot it's complicated it's long a lot of other stuff happened he hits a door and he has an anxiety attack because he's like, I'm the most loyal in this house. And, you know, we see the 24 hour live streams. We, the people, and we know that he is loyal. He, there is no, he's not making plans with anyone else. He really is loyal to the team. And so he, he's like, I can't believe that they're doing this, talking behind my back, whispering about me. I'm the most loyal out of all of them. He cries. It's a whole thing. Then one by one, everyone in his team come into the room that he's in and gaslights him right in front of our eyes right in front of our eyes that we weren't whispering about you that's so weird that you saw that that's so interesting that's not what we were doing um you might be a little paranoid because of nominations do you think it could be because of and then he believed it and he said i must be paranoid yeah you're right you guys know I'm loyal. I, I must just be paranoid because of because of nominations. And I see you guys whispering. And they were like, well, we were whispering about things we talked to you about. You know all the things. But they were all lying. And now they're good. I personally can't wait until they come out of that house. And he realizes that that panic attack and that meltdown was warranted. Because he felt so guilty about it after. And he felt so stupid about it after. And it was so wild to see gaslighting in real time. It was wild because you as the audience knows what everyone was, was whispering about the entire day. And then you see them go and lie to his face. 
television is back baby no i'm just kidding um look did i want to get obsessed with the show that i can watch 24 hours a day no i didn't but nicola porcella that's his name um has captured my heart and my vagina and i i actually do think i love him now so if look the clips up on you on no on tiktok You'll fall in love with him too. And then what? We're all loveless fools looking like idiots over a man that doesn't even know our name. <laughs> but um, I would love more people to join me on this obsession. It's it is a great show. It it highlights great Latin American talent. Um, it's very interesting to see the way that people become when isolated and where four million pesos is on the line. It's very interesting to see the depths of nasty that people will go through um and gaslighting is real and he and and he has mental health issues and he talks about the fact that he tried to commit suicide in 2018 so it's like a lie and these people you know it's money involved and it's just it's 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 a lot and it gave me a little bit of anxiety and i almost stopped watching it but did i know i kept watching it and now julie understands what i go through every summer when i watch big brother and I'm so sorry you have to deal with that. I mean, okay, it but... starts next week. Oh, Jesus. Do you watch the 20? 20... Do you like log into live streams or are you um, just watching the highlights? Uh, rarely. I don't, I will sometimes, but, but, um, but not too much. Although I do appreciate the live stream clips that end up on Twitter. I watch a lot of that. Here's the thing I watch the live stream. Like if I'm working from home, I'll just have it on. Uh-huh. don't tell me my, my my boss um so i watch the light so i know a lot of what's actually happening then uh-huh. i watch the gala that they have every f- friday and wednesday friday and sunday they have like a show that uh-huh. recaps what's going on throughout the week biased yeah lie out of context i'm like if this is all i watched i wouldn't have anything straight uh, they're very similar criticisms for all for the for the American version of Big Brother. I mean, so you, I, if you're gonna invest, invest in the live streams because they do tell you the story wrong. <laughs> right. Well, but yes, I follow a lot of Big Brother accounts on Twitter, and so right, they're talking about all these things. Yeah. 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 Ooh. Julie in her reality TV era. I mean, Jesus Christ. Who would have known? It's a depression. <laughs> the depression. <laughs> Thank you, Julie. Thank you. Um, I'll share my azucar. Uh, for the past five months, I have been going to a place called The Gym. Um, Stop. Stop it. <laughs> and I had hired a trainer, uh, <laughs> and his name is Garrett. Uh, and now Garrett is moving to San Diego. Uh, Garrett. And my Asuka this week is Garrett and the gym because uh, I've learned so much and I've gained a new friend. And Aww. he is such a sweetheart and he has been so kind and so patient uh, and so sweet. Uh, and it has been such a pleasure. And I don't know who I am anymore. Who am I going to the gym with a trainer and enjoying it? I wow. don't know. Wow. Um, but now I'll be trainerless. Mm. I'm gonna give that a shot, see, see how it goes. I don't okay. know. I don't know. Okay. Garrett and I were talking about it. I don't know, but I'm gonna give Talk it a it shot. Um, I'm gonna give it a shot. Um, anybody who wants to hold me accountable, I would appreciate it. Uh, if anybody lives on the west side of LA and wants to go to a little gym off Santa Monica Boulevard near the 405, uh, let me know. Um, but yeah, I'm going to give it a shot and we're going to see how it goes. And if we get through August and September, maybe October, and I'm not doing what I maybe need to do, then maybe I might hire another trainer, but, um, Mm. It's been lovely, actually. I love that for you. And my titties are hard. Mm. Oh. Yeah. Mine too. So, I was, you know, 
<laughs> I love that. Good for you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so yeah, if you are in need of a trainer and live in San Diego, let me know. I have a wonderful recommendation. Lovely. Okay. Great. Okay. Well, I think that's it. We did it. <laughs> I think that's it. Listen, I we probably won't have a new episode next week. Um and you're you're gonna be okay. Yes. Listen, but, listen to this one in two parts. This yeah, is a, this is a, big, this this is a one, hefty one. We made this one extra long. You can listen yeah, yeah. to it in multiple parts. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. make it last two weeks. Um, but we will be back. Yes. We will absolutely be back. Uh mm -hmm. thank you for everybody's patience. Thank you for coming back. Uh, we have lots more cheesement to get through, so don't worry. Uh, make sure you follow us on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok. Make sure that you um, visit our website, youmeandcheesement.com. Make sure that you leave us a review, subscribe, do all the fun things you could do with this podcast. Make sure you can sh you share it with somebody. That would be a big help. Um, and if you do all that, we'll be back with more cheesement. But until then, make sure you have lots of love, lots of peace, and most importantly, Lots of chisme in your life. Bye. Bye.